Hi guys, welcome to the bee shed. Um, I've been racking my brains to think of something interesting and exciting and different to make with all of this rhubarb I have. Um, because let's face it, there's only so many jars of jam and so many crumbles anyone can make. And then I realized we have bees, we have honey, lots of honey. Um, so I'm going to channel my inner Viking and I'm going to make rhubarb mead. I've never made mead before, but you know, let's see how it turns out. So I have this dislike. It's my rebellious streak. I don't like following set recipes. So I've looked, researched recipes over the internet and in books and taken sort of an average of all of them. What I'm using, I'm using 600 grams of rhubarb and one and a half kilos of honey. I've got my demijohn and I have some focus mead yeast. Um, I just bought that off Amazon. There's plenty of lots of different yeasts. Um, some of the recipes said you could use wine yeast, but I found mead yeast, so I'm going with mead yeast. So up here in the bee shed, we obviously don't have a proper cooker. I'm just using a little camping stove. It works fine. Got a pan of water boiling. I did bring water up from the house in a kettle, so it was already hot. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to add frozen rhubarb. I have 600 grams of frozen rhubarb. I'm just going to plop that in there. The reason you use frozen rhubarb is because as it defrosts, it goes really gooey because the, the action of freezing it and defrosting it breaks down the structure of the plant. You all know if you defrost something, it goes mushy and gooey and that's what you want for this. That means that it'll break down and it'll, absorb, it'll get absorbed into the water much quicker than if you were just trying to boil it fresh. So leave that to boil away for 20 minutes, half an hour, until your juice is nice and pink and rhubarby. I knew there was a reason we kept so many brood boxes in here. It's so I can use it as a stand to weigh out my honey. So I need a kilo and a half of honey. I'm using last year's heather honey, so it'll be really, really strongly flavoured. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that you can still taste the rhubarb through it, but we haven't had any spring honey off yet. Um, it's just about, they've not quite capped it yet, so heather honey will have to do. So heather honey tends to crystallise really easily. Um, it's just because of the makeup of the plant. So the stuff in the middle of the tub is almost solid. The stuff around the edge was all nicely runny, but the stuff in the middle is almost solid. So I'm resorting to scraping it out with my spoon. We went a little bit over. It's only 50 grams, so I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. But yeah, if you look at the stuff in the middle, it's almost like creamed honey. And that's just because the sugar particles in the honey have crystallised. It will, around the outside you can see that it's, it's quite runny. It'll all get runny like that as it warms up. To be honest, it's so warm in this bee shit, I'm surprised it's still crystallised. But for making mead, it doesn't matter if your honey's a bit crystallised. Because when you warm honey up, it stops being crystallised. It basically just melts the sugar crystals. <clears throat> right, so that's been bubbling away for about half an hour now. You can see it's, it's all broken down, just little stringy bits of rhubarb in a rhubarb water. So the next job is to strain it. Little strainer. Ow. That's hot. 
My oven gloves are in the house, but it's fine because my bead gloves will do. left there is gloopy bits of rhubarb fibres and then the juice is a lovely pink rhubarb coloured juice. I'm going to leave the rest of the juice to seep out of this and that to cool down slightly because if you put your yeast in with water too hot it'll die. Yeast is a living living organism so if you put it in water that's too hot it, it dies. Right I think I've got all the juice I'm going to get out of this so this is going in the compost but that still needs to cool down a little bit. It's taking ages for the, the rhubarb water to cool down and for the honey to warm up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the rhubarb water to the honey, mix it up, which will hopefully cool both cool the rhubarb water down and warm the honey up and it'll get to a combined ideal temperature. I'm going to mix it together with my grumpy lady spatula. So that honey is being nicely diluted. In fact, I can't feel any thicker bits now. I think it's cooled down enough. Let's have a... Well, I can hold my little finger in it quite happily. That tastes divine. That's really, really good. Right, damage on. Freshly cleaned out and sterilized. There's still some bits. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some water, dilute what's in and put that in. This needs topping right up to the top with water anyway. So I'm just going to get all the last little bits of rhubarb honey goodness out of the bowl. I don't want to waste anything, do I? my mead yeast. It says this packet is good to make 25 litres of mead. Now that's a gallon which is four and a half litres so so I need one fifth of that. So that's 28 grams so let's call that 25 grams to make 25 litres and I want to make four litres so let's say I need five grams. I'm going to do it properly, I'm going to weigh it out. That's six grams, it'll do. So there you go, six grams. I am not going to try and put a gram back in the bag. So I'm just going to tip that in there and then I'm going to fill it up with even more water and fill it up to there. My thinking behind putting the yeast in and then putting the rest of the water in is that adding the water will mix the yeast in a bit more than just putting it in there. I don't know. I've never done this before. There you go. It's full. So, last step. This is an airlock. The idea with this is it will let the air out as this ferments, but it won't let any nasty stuff in. So what you do you get cooled 
boiled water. And you fill those bits up. And then you take your bung and you push it down in the top. More in. And what happens is the air can come out and the air can push its way through this water but nothing can go in and push its way that way through the water. So as this starts fermenting, the bubbles, it'll bubble and the air will come up and the air will go out because otherwise it would just compress and compress and then boom, your bottle would explode, which would be really messy. So we're going to leave that like that. It should start fermenting fairly quickly and then we know it's done when it stops fermenting. There you go. Rhubarb mead. Right, so it's been sitting here for about two hours now and it's just started fermenting. There's more froth on the top and it's bubbling away quite happily. Um, I'm just gonna leave it now. It'll probably start bubbling more and then the bubbling will slow right down and it'll eventually stop and that's when it's finished fermenting. And that's when you know it's finished and that's when it's ready to bottle and sample or put aside to mature depending on how much restraint you have right that's it for this video um i will give you an update when it's ready to bottle and sample can't wait um until then guys see you later